Thank you very much, and thank you very much for these kind, uh, kind words. First of all, I would like to thank you very much for the invitation and for the opportunity to speak here at the EU India 60 campaign. I'm delighted to be here as a representative of the European Parliament and as chairman of the European Parliament's delegation for relations with India. Of course, once again, the corona situation does not allow us to meet physically, which is really a shame. The pandemic has also prevented me from going on a planned visit to India in December with the rest of the delegation from the Parliament for relation with India. Uh, I was really looking forward and uh, to this very exciting trip and hopefully uh, we, can, uh, we can manage to do uh, this trip uh, in this year. I do hope that 2022 will be the year where the European Parliament once again will be able to visit its friends in India and in the Lok Sabha. I personally hope to be there in August when India can celebrate its 75 years Independence Day. That will be a great honor for me and it will mean a lot uh, for me to, to be there in August. I've been invited today to speak to you about the relations between the European Union and India, and especially between the Lok Sabha and the European Parliament to celebrate the 60 years anniversary of diplomatic relations between India and the European Union. It is a subject that I'm naturally very interested in and which is incredibly important both now, but most certainly also in the future. I will address three key issues where I believe the European Union and India could and should work more closely together for the benefit of both parties and the almost two billion people these two partners represent. The first topic that comes to my mind when considering where the European Union and India could build stronger ties in its relation to free trade. Global trade has, as no other instrument, led to an increase in living standard for all in the past decades and will still be one of the main drivers of much needed economic growth for us all. Both the European Union, but of course especially also India, needs a stronger uh, economical uh, foundation to meet the challenges in the future. It is therefore of utmost importance that we work hard and focused towards more free trade between our two partners. To be honest, there has been some challenges in the past when it comes to the economic cooperation between the European Union and India. Considering the cultural, economic and geographical dif uh, differences between the two actors, this is not uh, nothing that comes as a big surprise. But despite the differences, or maybe because of these differences, I believe the two actors can benefit enormously from each other. I was therefore extremely happy to see that the negotiations on free trade agreements were resumed during the European Indian Summer Summit in May last year, and especially the positive statement by Prime Minister Modi. That means that there are now positive signs from both India and the European Union to build on and that is exactly what we need in order to complete a free trade agreement. EU is India's third largest, uh, largest trading partner behind China and the United States. India is only the 10th largest trading partner for the European Union. These figures show that there is definitely room for improvement. And I strongly believe that with a free trade uh, and investment agreement, these economic figures would be much higher. What I do not understand is how the European Union can establish a comprehensive agreement on investment with China, but not have such an agreement with India. EU has, a long, sta has long stated that it pursues a value-based approach to its international agreements, and I believe it is time to actually live up uh, to that ideal by uh, deepening our trade relations with India. There are many technical and political decisions to be made before one can reach an agreement. In my many years in politics, I have learned that difficult and lengthy agreements can only be reached if, they are, uh, if there is a mutual interest. But equally important, there needs to 
uh, be a common respect and trust between the negotiation, uh, negotiation parties. I can ensure you that I will be working towards strengthening this trust and respect between India and the European Union from my position as chair of the EU-India delegation. Another very important issue where we can strengthen the cooperation between India and, uh, and EU is the fight against climate change. We are all interconnected in this fight and we need to work together towards sustainable solutions to these shared problems. Neither India nor the European Union can solve the climate crisis alone, but together we have a much better chance of success. For a long time, many European countries, including my own country, have pursued uh, policies of, the, of climate nationalism, uh, where they have only focused on themselves and their own green transitions as uh, the expense of the bigger picture. I believe that if uh, we should have a fair chance of fighting back against climate change, we need to set national uh, policies aside and work towards international shared solutions. And India, which is almost 1.4 billion people, must be uh, one of the main actors in this transition. I was therefore also very excited to see uh, Prime Minister Modi an announce India's ambitious uh, climate goals at the COP26 in Glasgow, including the target of net zero emissions in 2070. It is no secret that India is yet to reach its peak emissions and its uh, development needs, so it will be a hard battle to get to climate neutrality. I believe that the European Union could assist India in many ways with knowledge sharing, foreign investment, di foreign direct investments and good practices. For example, could the development of green hydrogen be one of the most important areas of cooperation? We need, in any case, to learn from each other to fight climate changes. Of course, this should not replace local solutions and local ownership, but cooperation and knowledge sharing is a fundamental supplement in our scared fight. At last, I wish to highlight uh, it uh, is the shared values between our two parties. India is an important strategic partner to the European Union. This is, of course, also reflected in the 2025 uh, Strategic Partnership Agreement. India and the European Union shares beliefs and values in many different areas. Both parties believe in a rule-based trading system, in democracy, rule of law and human rights. That makes India a natural partner for the European Union, and it means that we can uh, collaborate on uh, promoting these values domestically and abroad. It is no secret that many countries around the world and also in India's backyard does not live by the same values as we do. With a more and more politicized global order where great power politics again plays a central role, I believe that this is extremely important that countries who fundamentally have similar views on basic values work together in order to resist pressure from non-democratic countries. India is the biggest democracy in the world. Such value-driven collaboration should be pursued in its own right, but will also evolve organically when we strengthen the trade, the investment, um, and climate cooperation between our two great parties. In the remaining two and a half years of my parliamentary term, I hope to be able to contribute to these developments for the benefit of both India and the European populations. Once again, I wish to thank you very much for inviting me to speak here to you today on these issues that for me are very important. I'm looking forward to continue my important work as a chair of the European Parliament's delegation to India and I really do hope that there will be speed on the cooperation between India and the European Union in 2022. I really do hope that 22 will be the year where the delegation. Where... Okay. Can you please, can you please unmute? Sorry, sir, for that interruption. 
Yeah, I really do hope that 2022 will be the year where the delegation can travel to India to inspire you, a wonderful country, to take up uh, political discussions. And I also do hope that the Lok Chiaba uh, could um, finalize their trip to, to Brussels, where we could meet in a, a high, uh, high level meetings in, in uh, Brussels. Let's uh, make the 2022 year where we really uh, walk the walk and talk the talk and start to cooperate more among India and the European Union. Thank you once again, and I wish you a very good discussions uh, this uh, very afternoon. Thank you.